I waited for this case for so long, but it's finally here and finally I've got time to review it. Hey there, today, today we are talking about Argon Eon, probably one of the most impressive cases for Raspberry Pi 4, which brings basically a network attached storage on NAS to your favorite development board. And I know this review comes late after the release, but I think after having a go with Disk Station 418 from Synology, which you can watch a video in this corner, I have some valid points to make. And in my next video, I'm going to be definitely pitching one against the other to, hmm, to tell you the differences. If it's the first time you hear about Argon 40, just know that they have really cool cases, cool as in really nicely designed and cool as it they really have nice thermal performance and it's not my first argon case in fact i review several in that video there but today's case is a monstrosity it's a massive four bay um, nas case for raspberry pi 4. if you want one for yourself you're expected to pay anywhere between 150 to 155 pounds and depending on where you shop, so I'm gonna link a couple of uh, links in the description to this video. But the case is actually quite solid, made from aluminium, and well, it feels like a 140 something or 150 pound case, so it's definitely worth considering. And to be honest, the case is heavy, well made, and it feels like something that would cost that much, so I'm definitely not feeling like I'm not getting my money's worth just from initial impressions. When I firstly seen the release pictures, I couldn't believe how nicely designed this is. Because when you think about NAS boxes, it's not something they would actually showcase. It's, it's one of those boxes that you would probably shove it underneath the bed and forget about it that exists and just take uh, the advantage of the you know network storage factor of it. Which is not the case with Argon Eon, which simply looks beautiful. So let's take a closer look and see what actually you're getting. It is designed for Raspberry Pi 4, and I'm painfully aware that these boards are very hard and very pricey nowadays to acquire, so if you're lucky and you have one to spare, then Argon Eon is definitely one of the cases that you should consider. Looking at the back panel, you'll see all of the Raspberry Pi ports exposed. Well, almost all. What we've got either USB 2.0 and 3.0, one of them's gonna be reserved to connect the drive, so you're essentially getting one of 3.0 ports. There's a micro SD card slot. The standard micro HDMI port has been actually upgraded to regular size ports, and there is even an access to a 40 pin header, so if you really want to tinker with a Raspberry Pi, well, you can. Other ports include the extension for gigabit, Ethernet, and audio jack. I love the fact that all the ports are hidden at the back, which means the case will look amazing wherever you're gonna put it on, especially thanks to the power button, which is located on top of the case and doubles up as a display. And that tiny OLED is such a brilliant and neat idea. It displays the most useful information about your system, so you can get an IP of your device, you can get information about the storage, or just plain system consumption, etc, etc. Now, this, these examples are included in the Argon 40 script, but there's nothing stopping you from writing your own script and displaying the information you need. If there is only one criticism of this button, it's the angle of that display. Because the button is located at the top of the case, the angle of the display makes it only easy to read if you're kind of above the case. So if the case itself is uh, on your eye level, then you're not going to be having such a great time reading that information. Another small thing that I've discovered during the assembly is about the magnetic panels on the side that hide the internals of the Argon Eon. As soon as you move them, the static will attach all of the fluff and dust in the air and they won't look as pretty. Now, on top of that, there isn't even the slots to kind of, you know, detach them with a fingertip or something, so you likely will have to wedge a thin knife or a screwdriver to open it up. But that's about all in terms of criticism. When it comes to assembling this, I run a full live stream assembling this bit by bit, and you'll be able to access this, this if you're interested, but the assembly process is pretty simple. It's not the easiest part to get into the Raspberry Pi hidden inside because you will have to remove one of the PCBs as the Raspberry Pi 4 is sandwiched between two different PCBs, the one that uh, extends the header and the one that actually provides an access to uh, drives. Speaking of hard drives, 
This is a 4-bay uh, NAS, which allows you to slot in up to four different drives. Now, you can slot in for 2.5 inch drives, whether they are mechanical or SSD, that's up to you. But remember, they are SATA 3 support. Or you can mix that with up to two 3.5 inch mechanical drives, you know, the big ones. One of the things I've discovered during my assembly, there is a hidden USB 3.0 port inside, which makes me curious, should I be using this to run my Raspbian OS from it? Personally, I haven't tried it yet, all my system is on the SD card, but at some point I might actually try this and see if I can use that to boot from USB instead. Another thing that this case has is the RTC real-time clock, and the implementation of that is hmm, slightly annoying. Having RTC is nice, however, there are some problems with this impl implementation. First, let's start with the battery, which is CR1220. I wish they would opt out for 2032, which are more popular choice. At first, I ran my box without the RTC battery, and I quickly discovered that will cause the problems because the clock will be set by whatever RTC is telling the system to do, which means in my case that was like, you know, 50 years ago, and that would cause problems with obtaining certificates, updating system, and, well, it didn't work very well. Even after I've installed the battery, I had to go through manually setting the time because for some reason the update of the time on the Raspbian OS wasn't really working as intended and it would constantly nag me about RTC having a different time until I manually updated. But now it's set and done, well, it's working and I'm probably gonna be okay until the battery will run out. Before I jump into a hard drive performance and the NAS performance, let's talk about uh, one more annoying thing, which are cooling fans. These things are as loud as jets when spinning at 100%, and honestly, you don't want to spin them at all. Now, I finally tuned in my fans to spin around 50%, which is nice because it provides adequate cooling and it remains fairly quiet. No, I know it's there, I can hear it, but it's not annoying. As soon as you ramp that uh, speed to 100%, it's like a vacuum cleaner, I swear. So do yourself a favor and download the Argon 40 configuration tool and set your fans properly. I've used the hard drive temperature because it was more manageable. But will that translate into a decent uh, cooling performance? Well, I ran some benchmark. Now on average, the Raspberry Pi 4 board without anything on it, the 8 gig version runs at about 52 degrees uh, at idle and thermally throttle at 82 degrees when putting through a stress test. Now when installed in Argon Eon, that idle temperature dropped to approximately 40 degrees, which was nice. And during my 20 minutes bench, the temperature went all the way to 52 degrees with the fan spinning at 50% at max because I, well, set it that way up until 70 degrees. Which is great because the thermal performance of that box is pretty decent and you'll never have to hear this fan again, which is something I really considered swapping for a Noctua fan instead. Ever since the biggest limitation has been removed from Raspberry Pi, uh, on the Raspberry Pi 4 we do have a 1 gigabit Ethernet, which is great. It means that the biggest bottleneck isn't there anymore and we can finally reach the true potential of many commercially available NASAs. And the story checks out with Argon Eon because I was quickly saturating this connection while either sending the files to my Argon Eon or downloading the files from my NAS drive. My read and write speeds were uh, in excess of 100 megabits per second, which is basically what my connection allows me to do, and it's way lower than both drives that I've got installed, the mechanical 3.5 inch drive and the SSD one. In fact, I would argue that in this scenario, Argon Eon's gonna be as good as any other NAS solution available from the shelf. So don't worry about that. However, there is one thing that we have to talk about. You'll notice that all four drives are connected to a single USB 3.0 port. Now in theory, that port has a bandwidth of 5 gigabits per second, which is more than enough to provide the bandwidth to saturate all the drives without any problems. However, 
that's only on paper. In reality, the write and read speeds will differ and that bandwidth is not going to be really available because of the CPU limitations. Without getting into many details, they will provide another bottleneck that you'll have to keep in mind. So the local transfer speed would purely depend on what drives I've got involved in a transfer. Now the peak would be still around 110 megabytes per second, which is frankly speaking fast enough, but it would depend on the drives actually involved in a transfer. So if I was transferring files from SSD to an SSD, I would have a constant speed of 110 megabytes per second. However, if I was transferring data from a fast drive like SSD to and write it to a slower drive like mechanical 3.5 inch drive, then that speed would fluctuate going down as low as 40 megs per second. It's not ideal if you're looking for redundancy or backup and cloning. However, it's not deal breaking. There was another very practical torture test I wanted to try. I would stream a single movie to a computer and check the playback while actually editing a Adobe Premiere project stored on the NAS drive itself. So you would use all the net resources to generate previews and scrub through the files while I'm streaming the content to another computer. And I'm pleased to report that apart from slightly longer opening times, I hardly noticed any difference and I was able to edit my videos for YouTube uh, directly from NAS drive, which is great because it's something I'm definitely looking forward to. There is one more warning that you are probably aware of. Now, we are talking about DIY NAS. So apart from putting the hardware together, you are expected to install and maintain the software as well, which can be challenging at times if you're doing it for the first time. Now, obviously for everyone that has a previous experience, that's gonna be a breeze. However, if it's your first time with something like Open Media Vault, I understand if things can get confusing. After my time with Synology DS418, where everything was pretty self-explanatory and easy, I have to spend around, I guess, six to eight hours to actually go through everything I wanted to set up on this box, learn and check on Google, because, well, let's face it, I'm, I'm not an expert in that matter and I had to look up a lot of information to figure out how it's done. But now that I have this one installed, I've learned a little bit more about the containers and I have a Plex to uh, serve my media content, content over the container because for some reason the old version of doing... Uh, it's a long story. But be advised that you are expected to put some time into configuring it and making sure that everything is working great before you start storing data on it that is sensitive. Argon Ian is definitely an interesting case which I would recommend you if you're looking for a NAS solution that you can deploy yourself, maintain yourself, learn a thing or two and have a satisfaction from having a really beautiful box on your desk. It's not a solution for everyone and it won't cover your advanced needs, however for a typical household use it's going to be more than enough, especially if you have a Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigs of RAM because that will give you such a big headroom that you'll never think about going back again. So if you're looking for a network attached storage project and a fancy case for your Raspberry Pi 4, then you have my blessing. Argon Eon is definitely worth your money and attention and if you're interested, check out the description of this video for the links. There is a one more thing I'd like to discuss, which is a deep dive between picking a consumer grade NAS or making your own with something like Raspberry Pi 4. And there is a reason why I secured the DS418 and Argon Eon for my soul, so I could pitch one against the other and come to a logical conclusion. But that's a subject for another video. So if you are interested, bear in mind I do not have a posting schedule, Use YouTube tools provided to get notifications whenever that's out. You know how it works. I do have a, a list of social media listed there, so follow me there to start the conversation, ask any questions about Argonian case, and big thanks for watching. I'll see you in next video. Take care. Bye.